In this video, I'm gonna show you my method for creating vintage pro wrestling t-shirts in Photoshop. And that's the bottom line, cause Fuller Mo said so. On the left side is the graphic I created for this tutorial. We're gonna recreate that on the right side using a blank canvas. So I think the first thing I wanna walk through is how I would get inspiration for a graphic like this. So typically if I'm doing something vintage, um, whether it's you know 70s, 80s, 90s through like Y2K era, I would go to a site like Grailed before I would go to Google or even eBay um, because there's just like way too much crossover of modernized Etsy stuff that ends up on, on eBay and ends up on Google. Whereas Grailed, I think they have a little bit more of a vetting process and like authentication process. I've definitely seen some modern graphics get through, but for the most part, um, you're gonna see authentically vintage pieces on Grailed. So if I was going through here for the first time, I could definitely start to see some common themes being used pretty early on. I've already seen multiple shirts with skulls, so that's definitely a theme we could run with. I'm seeing a lot of black, white, and blue being used. That's a good color palette. I'm seeing snakes being used. The other thing I'm doing is just kind of trying to get a better grasp on other themes as well because I don't want to necessarily rely on skulls and snakes. By the way, you definitely don't have to rely on previous graphics to determine the direction you want to go in terms of imagery. You could use literally like his biography, like look up his background, um, and that can help you make some choices as well. As long as it like fits within the personality of Stone Cold, it's gonna work. So for example, I see um, a silhouette of Texas in the background here. Do we wanna work in the Texas flag? Do we wanna work in the desert? So it's not just that looking at graphics like skull. Okay, I'll use a skull. Like get the gears turning and start to think more creatively about different routes you could go based on things that you're seeing and sort of just like bounce ideas off, off one another and create whole new themes. So keeping these graphics in mind and what I just mentioned with his background, I think we'd probably get to work and just start piecing some things together to see what we come up with. The first thing I'm gonna do is try to find some imagery to work with. I'm just gonna use Google. This is a personal project. I'm not gonna be selling this t-shirt. So I'm just gonna use Google images to see what I can come up with. I'm filtering by images larger than two megapixels. I think this one is gonna work really well because it's it's a very clear image. Um, it's, it's a good resolution and it's a straight on shot. Uh, so I think we should definitely use this. I'm just gonna drag this to my desktop because we're actually gonna use the upscale tool that I used in a previous video to make these images larger. I've just been using this all the time because it just helps a lot. Like if I'm lucky, I'll find an image that's super, super huge. But if I find one that's just sort of on the edge of probably being large enough, but could be better, I'll just upscale it because it doesn't take long and it will improve the graphic uh, massively. So let's open up upscale and then I'm just gonna drag this image in. As of now, this is free software, so you can go to upscale.org and get this for yourself. So I'm not gonna double the upscale because I think this will actually be large enough for us to work with. So I'm just gonna click upscale right away and let it go to work. Cool, so we've got our upscaled image. I'm gonna grab that from the desktop and just bring it right into Photoshop. Another reason this photo should work really well is the background is pretty blurry, which makes it easy to remove. Um, I'm just gonna use the remove background uh, quick action. And if you don't see this, it could be for one of two reasons. Go to window, contextual taskbar, and it should pop right up. But you might have to just make this photo on its own layer and then go to window, properties and you'll see it under quick actions right here. So yeah, if you don't see it for some reason, try both of those things and it should pop up. So I'm gonna click remove background. We'll see what it does. Let's zoom in and see what we need to fix. So yeah, for some reason it cut off a big chunk of his uh, ear looking like a Vander Holyfield. Sorry, Steve. Um, so I'm just gonna go in with a white brush and just sort of paint in here. Actually, I'm gonna change the hardness to 100% and just go in here and fix this. So I usually, this is just usually what works for me. Like I'll just go in and sort of um, use a white brush around it so I can just see like what I actually need to fix. And then I'll hit X and that'll change the foreground to black. And then I'll just reduce the size. And you could either like go in here and just do this like freestyle, you know, like this, or you could use the lasso tool. I'm already in here, so I'm just gonna like use the brush. I think it'll be fine because it's not like a super intricate shape. So I'm just gonna draw around like this. 
And then with this stuff, I will grab the, the lasso tool so I can just like get rid of all of it at once. Grab that. Make sure this second box up here at the top is checked so that you can add more to your selection with uh, the lasso tool. And then I'll just go to edit, fill, and that should get rid of all that. Cool, let's look at his other ear just in case. All right, that looks fine. His head here is messed up. I think I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool here. So I can just sort of like go along this edge where his head should be there. That should be fine. Little bit here. And then we're gonna use white because that's going to bring back the image, right? This is not perfect up here, but it's really not a big deal. Here, we definitely gotta fix this, right? So again, polygonal lasso tool. We'll just cut into here and create this general shape that we're seeing. Then we'll fill it with black. Cool. Okay, now the other thing we can do is, you know, when I zoom in here, it does look a little rough around the outside, just kind of in general. But if I double click into this layer mask thumbnail, what I'll be able to do is increase the feather and then I'll increase the contrast and that typically will smooth it out a bit. You just have to sort of eyeball it, you know. And like this stuff, like this is something that would be better off fixed with a brush. Um, but overall, I just wanted to like smooth it out around the edge and doing the feather and contrast usually does a pretty good job of that. I don't think I need to get into like shifting edges or anything there. So I'll just click OK. And then I am just because I've already talked about it, just gonna <laughs> fix his arm right here really quick. So let's bring this into our canvas. I'm just gonna go back to the canvas. And then what I'll do is I'll just like bring out this uh, tab and that will allow me to just like drag it into the canvas. All right, so we're good here. I'm gonna zoom in and actually fix his head again. I don't know why, but it, it got, uh, it just ended up with like too much of the original image around his head and it just looks bad. So I'm just gonna fix that really quick. So let's add a gradient to the bottom of the photo so we can get that nice fade. I'll first rename this main photo and then I'll double click into the photo layer and click gradient overlay. And I'll make sure that this second box is checked under basics and that's foreground to transparent and my foreground is black. And so we're going from black to transparent and that's creating a nice fade um, on the bottom of the graphic. Now, I think this will be fine with the default settings, an angle of 90% scale 100. If anything, I might pull back on the scale a little bit, maybe 70, that should be good. Cause I, do, I don't want it to fade so much that it starts fading out his face. Cause that's like the main part of this photo. So that should be good. And if we need to adjust later, we definitely can. The next thing I can tell you that I did is got rid of this skull graphic. I know it's like his logo, but it just was clashing with this signature. It just didn't look good. So to do that, I'll just simply add a new layer above this main photo, grab my brush. I'll pull the hardness down to um, 0% and then I'll literally just like brush it out. So even though it looks a little bit sketchy right now, you can definitely see where I painted over the photo. We're going to end up adding so many adjustment layers and effects that it it's just not going to matter. So don't worry about that. Let's grab some other photos and we'll keep building this out. So we'll jump back to Google images and the next one we used is right here. So I'm going to do the same thing and just upscale this. So let's close this image and I'm just going to drag it to my desktop, open up upscale, click select image, and then I'm just going to drag this over and same thing. I think this will be fine. Like it's not our main image anyways, so we can just click upscale and let it do its thing. I'm going to grab the upscaled version, bring it into Photoshop and same thing. I'll just remove the background from this. So I'll click remove background. Let's see what it gives us. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm gonna go in here and just clean this up right here. So I'll make sure the layer mask is selected. I will grab a black brush and I'll just clean this up. And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like try to, <laughs> I'm not gonna use like refined hair on his pit hair. I don't think it's really that huge of an issue. Uh, let's see, so his hand is messed up right up here. We're gonna bring back that. Just using the white brush here. I'm not gonna make this like absolutely perfect because it's like sort of a background photo. 
but I am gonna just clean up this area. I don't even know if this is even showing in the design. I don't even know if we need to do this, but might as well. Then I'll just get rid of this little crap down here. All right, so we'll do the same thing and just drag in this image and we're gonna put this in the background. So I'll move that down here. And I'm gonna start grouping these things together so that they're easier to move around. So main photo, photo left. So let's size this down. I'm holding down the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio. If I don't hold down the shift key and I try to resize it, then it does this and it skews the image. So that's just gonna be like a setting that you have. Either it's gonna be, you have to hold the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio or you don't hold the shift key. Um, so I'll let you figure that out. So we've got the left photo here. And the first thing I did to treat this photo was I added a gradient map. So with this photo left layer selected at the bottom of the layers panel, I'll click add new adjustment layer and go to gradient map. And then right away I'll right click and create clipping mask. I really try to make a habit out of clipping individual gradient maps to the images because if you don't do that, you might find that as you design, like certain parts have gradient maps that you don't necessarily want to have them. So it's just all about being deliberate about where you're adding, you know, different effects. So I just used a gradient map from my gruesome gradient maps pack. Um, and I think it was this third one in and it was good. Like I, I didn't need to really edit it too much. Any difference that you're seeing over here on the left side is a result of a levels adjustment, not the actual gradient. So let's get this snake image added on the right side. I'm gonna be totally honest. I couldn't find the right image like on Google or using stock images. I just couldn't, I couldn't find anything badass where like its mouth was open and the fangs were showing and like there's venom and all that stuff. So I used mid journey to generate this and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Um, this is gonna be a super, bare bones like crash course so if you want to learn more about mid journey and ai art and discord and all that stuff just watch a video after you watch this um so that you can learn more about it but the first thing i did was actually i jumped into pinterest because i needed to find a reference image for mid journey so i went to pinterest i searched evil snake found this pretty badass looking like vintage sort of painting and i right clicked open image a new tab and so now I have this URL that I can plug into Mid Journey. So I use Discord with Mid Journey. I use the prompt vintage painting of Evil Snake with tongue out reference. And then I pasted in the URL from right here, right? And it just shortened it automatically to this. That gave me some pretty good results. Now you can get super detailed with prompts. You can highly detailed and like numbers and versions and all this crazy stuff. If you wanna do that, cool. I've gotten really good results just with like a pretty basic description. So this worked for me. I think using the term vintage painting was really helpful. So I'm glad I did that. And that was just from getting this, you know, sort of image from Pinterest that helped me with the prompt. So these things definitely work like hand in hand. This looks pretty badass, but I really loved how this one looked. And I love that it had like the yellow eye and all that stuff. So once I knew that I wanted to use this image, I clicked upscale two, and that made a larger version of this. Now I could very well just grab this and bring like screenshot it and bring it into upscaler, but you can upscale directly in mid journey and then I'll bring it into upscaler. So there's like, there's levels to this, right? So the other thing you see here is V and that's variation. So if I clicked V2, it would essentially take this um, this generated image and make variations of it. So it would probably use like the same general layout and maybe it'll change the tongue or the eyes or the, the fangs or something like that. But I was good with this. So I just clicked U2, made a larger version of it and that's gonna be right here. And so this is what I brought into Upscaler. So let's do that now. Do the same thing we did with uh, Google. I'll just drag this to my desktop, open Upscaler. And then I'll clear this out by clicking select image, cancel that, drag this over, and we're gonna upscale it. So looking at this image, I don't think removing the background is gonna be very useful because it's mostly black anyways, and I think it'll just result in like losing little bits of detail that we might want in there. I do think that there's a lot of like debris that's, you know, it's supposed to look painted, so that makes sense. So I think we'll end up editing a lot of that out, 
but I think we can just grab this whole canvas and bring it in. So that's what I'll do. I'll hit Command A, grab the whole thing, Command C to copy, back to our canvas, and then I'll, I'll paste it in using Command V. So first let's rename this layer Snake, and then I'm gonna right click, convert to Smart Object, and then we'll just size it down, and I believe I need to tilt it as well to the right. So I'll just sort of like move this and tilt it at the same time, looking at this image on the left, just to try to get it close. And I do know that I want this like fang to be overlapping, so I'm trying to like sort of think in my mind how that's gonna look as well. The next thing I'll do is add a levels adjustment layer over the entire thing. That's gonna help out with this snake image and just making it look more like it does on the left side overall. So I'll go to this top layer, and then at the bottom, you'll see this little half circle. Click that and go to levels. So looking at this properties window, we can make some adjustments to the levels. So we've got low lights, mid tones, and highlights. Um, I will usually start with the low lights. And so I'll move that towards the center. And then once I really start to lose like some details, that's when I'll work these mid tones towards the low lights. And that's essentially like blowing out the midtones. That is honestly probably good. So adding this levels adjustment layer definitely helped us out. It brings the graphic to life. It helps out with this snake especially, but we still have a bunch of debris right here. So what I'm gonna do is just make a new layer above this snake and then use a soft round brush right here and literally just paint away parts of the snake that we don't want um, You know, with this style of graphic it's gonna work just fine. Plus the image we generated is like supposed to be a painting, so we might as well paint on it. So now that the snake image is looking better, I'm actually going to group all of the layers together and then use blend if to remove the black from the background. And I'll explain exactly why I'm doing that in a second. So let's get all of these layers in their own group. So let's grab this bottom layer. I'll hold down the shift key, grab the top one, and that will highlight all of those layers. And then I'll just hit command G and that's going to put them in their own group. And I'll just rename this layered artwork. And then I'll double click into that new group and then I'll hold down the option key and split this toggle and then I'll move this over to like 150, okay? And so what that's gonna allow us to do is now we can blow out the snake a little bit more and not worry about that background that we have in there. So if I go back into levels and I blow it out a little bit more, like blow out the image overall. And now I can go down to that snake layer and just go to image adjustment, brightness, contrast, check use legacy, bump up the contrast and bring down the brightness. And that removes a bit of the extra debris. So then I'll click okay. Now the moment I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for, let's get this text added. Before we move on, I have to tell you about the GFX World online community. Our members range from t-shirt designers to clothing brand owners, print shops, everyone from seasoned pros to beginners just getting started. That means you can ask questions and get feedback or advice from industry professionals. You've got a couple options depending on how serious you wanna take this. You can join the premium community which gives you access to exclusive tutorials and design tools the raw photoshop design files from all of my new tutorials as well as weekly calls with me and other designers where you can ask questions and get feedback directly in the free community you'll be able to interact with others and get access to a rotating list of freebies there you'll also find my 101 course on the basics of t-shirt design in photoshop i hope i see you there now back to the tutorial the font that i used for stone is called Un Underwood Champion. So I'll just click in here and write out stone. Click show transform controls at the top so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then just size it up. And I definitely made some adjustments to the spacing between the letters. Um, to do that, I just went in here and highlighted the letters I wanted to adjust. Went to character changed it a little bit here. So I brought that one closer. I think I actually used like 75, brought that closer. This one I spaced out a bit more because I felt like it was running into each other right there. And I think I brought the S over a little bit too. Cool. So we've got stone written out. We picked out a font. It's just plain white. Doesn't really look that great. So what's the easiest fix for that? I'm going to double click this uh, text layer 
And then in the top left corner of this layer styles panel, it says styles and that's where I can load in some presets. So I've already loaded in my 90s pro wrestling textile pack volume one and two. So if I wanted to, I could just go through and click any of these and probably find something good to use. But some of the colors are a little bit off. So how do we fix that? So one way would be to literally just go through here and adjust these different effects and change the colors, right? But another thing you could do that I've found to be um, a lot easier, especially if you're like just getting started and you don't necessarily understand how these individual effects work, is you just pick out something that you like from here, click OK, and then put this text in a group. So I'll just hit Command G with this text layer highlighted, and then above the group, I'll add a gradient map like we did on this photo, right? So we'll use the exact same gradient map we used here. So at the bottom of our layers panel, this little half circle, I'll click that, then I'll click gradient map, and then right away, I'll right click on that gradient map layer and click create clipping mask. And so now it's just clipping to that group of text. So now if I click this gradient bar, I can change the gradient map to the same thing we used on this photo on the left, right? Which was the third option in this gruesome gradient maps volume one pack. So I'll just select that, click okay. And now we can adjust the text even further. I'm gonna select the horizontal type tool on the left side. And then up at the top where it says create warp text and has like the T with the little line under it. I'll click that. And then I'll change the style from none to arc lower. And then I'm going to change the bend to like negative 25. Cool. Okay. Then I'm going to grab this text and I'm not going to hold down the shift key and I'm just going to drag it down because I'm not really worried about the aspect ratio. Now I'm more so worried about like how this text fits into the rest of the graphic. And it can be skewed like 90s graphics they can look a little bit like skewed and weird so this looks okay but the gradient definitely changed when we warp this text because the pattern inside of the text shifted so let's double click back into this text and we'll select pattern overlay and we'll just move this pattern so that we get back some of that gradient and you can just use your mouse to, to basically move the pattern okay so i still want the bottom to have that like dark purple sort of like a dark purple black. So I'm just gonna shift that down to maybe there. That should definitely work. So I'll click okay. So now I'm gonna bump down this text a little bit more. I'm just holding down the shift key and using the arrows. Cool. So just to stay organized, I'm gonna rename this group stone cold text. And then I'm going to highlight this gradient map and create another group that just says text. And we're actually gonna use this group down here for the cold on the bottom so that we can utilize uh, this gradient map in the same way we did with the top text. Before I forget, I'm also gonna grab this photo left group and I'm gonna move it above the text, but under the main photo so that his arms are going over the text, which we see on the left side. I also wanna take care of the overlapping fang that you see on the left side. So you can see like going right over his shoulder. It's just, you see a little bit of that fang. So let's highlight the snake right layer, hit Command J to duplicate it. And then I'm just gonna right click and merge the group right away because I think we're about to get a little bit destructive. I'm just gonna use the lasso tool and like lasso around this little section here. And then I'm gonna right click, select inverse and just delete it. So now we've got just this little bit of the fang going over his shoulder. And in theory, we should be able to use remove background, but I don't know how well it's gonna work. So yeah, it didn't really work very well. I just don't think that there's like enough of an image for it to work with. So let's just use literally like the eraser tool. So I'm gonna change the hardness to 100%, go in here and just like get super destructive and, and old school with it. I just like having these small details that add more, you know, dimension to the graphic overall. So that works. And then we can definitely like move both of these layers to position that any way we want. So like if we wanted more of that fang showing on the overlap, we would just probably position it like this so that you can see more of it, right? While I was zoomed in, I did notice that his head was a little bit weird right here. So let's fix that. I don't know if that was just like, I was a little bit careless on the cutout or what caused that, but we're just gonna fix this. So I'm just using the polygonal lasso tool. I'll go to the main photo 
And since it's still in that um, layer mask, I'll just click fill and that should just clean it up. Yep. Cool. Okay, now back to the text. So like I said, we're gonna use this same group for the text on the bottom too. But the problem is that we're gonna need to duplicate the group because this is going under a bunch of stuff and this text is going over everything. So let's just duplicate this group, Command J, and then I'm just gonna move it to the top layer and I'm gonna jump into this group. We're gonna warp it in the opposite way. So instead of arc lower, we're gonna click arc upper, click OK. Then I'm gonna write out cold, then Command A to select the whole text and I'll change it to army. And we are gonna have to like skew it down a bit cause it's definitely much wider um, over on the left. So I'm not holding down the shift key. I'm just skewing the text and sort of like freeform transforming it. So that placement is good. I have to do the same thing with the pattern. So I'll double click into it and then I'll just move this pattern up so we get more of that gradient on the bottom. So now let's get the signature added in here. I'm gonna jump up to the top layer, back out to Google, and I just found you know, an image of his autograph. We'll bring it into Photoshop. I'm just gonna use the lasso tool here, lasso around the text, nothing too crazy. Make sure I get a clean selection. Command C to copy, back to our canvas, Command V, paste it in. I'll size it up. It looks crazy now um, because of the blend if. That's why it looks so wild. Then I'll go to image adjustments threshold so that we get just that black and white signature. Click OK, grab the magic wand tool, make sure anti-alias and contiguous are not checked. And then I'll click the white, hit delete, deselect do a color overlay of white and I can't see everything. So I'll change to the default settings, white overlay, boom. Now we've got the signature and we can reposition this as we need to. So let's get these background clouds added in. I'll go down to my bottom layer, then plugins stock up. If you're not familiar with this plugin, it's something I developed for Photoshop. It allows you to search millions of copyright free stock photos directly from Photoshop. So you don't have to uh, use a bunch of different websites or Google or anything like that. I think I actually searched dark clouds and let's see if we can find the image. Yeah, it's right here. So it's gonna show you like the results in a different order, but yeah, it was one of the first few results. So I just clicked that, brought it into my canvas over here on the right side, moved it over and then I think I like dragged it up and like skewed it a bunch because I really like the clouds but like the road I could like take it or leave it but I really like the cloud so I wanted like a lot of them showing so from here let's see I'll just nudge it over and bring it down a bit then I'll double click into these clouds and I'll select inner glow and I'll change the size to 250 make sure everything up here is default. So it should just be black um, and everything else can stay the same. If you want to mess with range, you definitely can, but uh, 50 usually works best. Click OK, and then I'll add a gradient map to this above everything. And I ended up grabbing colors like from the snake. So I just save those out so I can just click them here, right? And I could probably adjust this a little bit to have a little bit more contrast because I am seeing quite a bit of contrast on the left. So I'm wondering if I like edited this a bit more after I saved it, probably. Cool, okay, that'll work fine from here. Like, I think I just added a new layer above this background and just like similar to what we did on the snake, I just like painted in any areas that I didn't like. So like I saw a little bit too much of the cloud there. So I got rid of it. Um, everything else looks Pretty cool. Honestly, I think this placement looks better than um, I did the first time. I will say the snake on the right side was cut out a little bit differently this time, which I'm fine with. Like it actually looks cool to me, so I'm just gonna leave it. I don't really think we need the clouds on both sides. And then I'm not really gonna worry about the clouds here because we're gonna add in um, the snake eye right here. I'll go up to this layer so that we can add in the snake and I used stock up again. I don't know if I searched snake I, let's try that snake eye. Um, was it this one? Yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yep. So 
right away. <laughs> Got the result that we need right away. And then I just drag this up to position the, um, the snake eye into here. Bro, what is this? What is this from? I gotta find out where this is coming from. Right here. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm glad we caught that. Yeah, the snake has a bunch of like, the brush must have went crazy and just like added a bunch of other stuff to it. So let's get rid of that. That's why I love that you can just right click and like find the layer that you need to. Okay, so I took this eye and I think I just tilted it like this. And then I just grabbed the lasso tool and just like made like an oval like this and just hit command J, threw it to the top, got rid of this layer. Then I double clicked into this layer and added an inner glow and I just increased the choke until I started to like sort of see it in there, right? Clicked okay, added a gradient map above that as well. And this one, we are going to clip to it. So create clipping mask above the snake eye. And then I just used the same gradient I used on the clouds. And I think I did the same thing where I just sort of like brought in more of the green and less of the white. On this snake layer, I think I actually would like to erase some of it because I don't like that I can see all the debris right here. So I'm gonna right click, go to snake. It's a smart object. So I'm gonna right click rasterize layer. And these are all like the final touches. So I don't, I'm not gonna get mad about like being a little destructive. So I'm just gonna grab all that hit delete, bring back some of those clouds. Um, and I think that just looks better. All right, a last little bit of extra sauce. So over here on the left side, I actually did add a gradient map over the entire layered artwork. And I changed the blend mode to darker color. And the gradient map itself is just black and white with the white like moved over a little bit. So it is affecting it a little bit differently on the left than you see on the right. And I can't really explain why that is, but I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if I go up to this layered artwork on the right, go down and add a gradient map, and then change the blend mode to darker color. I mean, first of all, this on its own looks pretty badass, but I want, I want more of that purple and blue to be shining through. So I'll just move this white down and that brings it back. Yeah, like 85, okay, that works. So it does look different than it does on the left, but whatever, it's technically a different design. Um, I think it just adds a little something that you can't really explain. So let's mock this up. I'll grab the layered artwork and the gradient map layer, right click and merge layers. Now we're gonna hit Command A to grab the whole canvas, Command C to copy. I'm gonna use the mockable plugin to get this mocked up. If you don't know what this is, similar to stock up which i showed you earlier it's a plugin developed specifically for photoshop that allows you to download from a library of over 4,000 high resolution apparel mockups so i partnered with pixel sauce on this if you don't know who pixel sauce is he's the king of mockups he's been doing it forever all of his mockups are always super crispy they're 4k resolution he's got all the colors included different angles, like everything you could ever ask for in a mock-up. So I can search directly in here for like garment dye. Like if we're doing a vintage style graphic, you'd probably want to use a garment dye t-shirt because that has vintage vibes. Um, so here's a bunch of options. We could go with Champion or Los Angeles Apparel. I'm going to use Shockaware um, because I have um, a good relationship with Shockaware and I love their blanks. And if I really wanted to, I could actually favorite this mock-up and use it later. So it allows you to create favorites. Pretty cool feature. So I'll jump back in there, grab this mock-up, and it's essentially just credit-based. So you can download um, one mock-up per credit. So depending on the plan you have, that means some of these incredibly high-resolution, amazing mock-ups are like 49 cents like per mock-up, which is completely insane. So that's good news. The other good news is that you can download them and then delete them. So like if I wanted to use this mockup, which we're going to in a second, I promise. Um, if I wanna use this and then delete it off my computer, cause it's a big file, like mockups are always really big files. 
I can delete it and then just use the plugin to re-download it if I want to use it again. That way I'm not taking up a bunch of space on my computer. It's definitely one of the main reasons why we developed this plugin. Mockups are just really big files, so this sort of eliminates that problem. So it comes with a quick tutorial that shows you how to change the design, change the colors, change the shadows and highlights, all that good stuff. All you have to do is hide that and then you can remove the tag, you can add a custom tag, do whatever you want. So under textures, you'll see there's an artwork layer. So you can just double click that and it's going to open up as a smart object and it says replace with your design. Click on the placement guide and then paste in your artwork, right? And then you can size it down and place it however you want on the mock-up. So I'm gonna make mine like pretty oversized like that. Cool. And then I'll hide this replace with your design, hide the placement guide, hit command S and then jump back into our mockup and it's been updated. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit to get that printed look in there. And then I'm going to go down to fabrics and I think I'm going to use shadow instead. So, you know, all of the colors are included. Um, so that's great. Shadow would definitely be the move on something like this to give it more of that vintage look from here, you know, depending on how you're using this mockup, you could, change the shadows to to make it look even more like sort of grungy and vintage i would just go to image adjustments brightness contrast make sure use legacy is checked bring down the brightness bring up the contrast and that's going to bring in more of those like organic shadows into the mock-up then from here you can keep the shadows you could remove them same thing with the background if you if you want to keep that if you want to remove it then to save out this mock-up go to file export save for web and save it as a PNG so you keep that transparent background. If you learned anything in this video, all that I ask is you take literally one second and hit that subscribe button. It would truly mean everything. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.